In this video, we're going to look at the HP Spectre X360 2-in-1 laptop. We're going to talk about my experience using it as well as who this laptop might be for because it's not as straightforward as you might think. But before getting into that, HP did send us this laptop, but they didn't pay for this review. Everything from here on out are going to be my thoughts and own opinions. This laptop is part of Intel's new Evo program which is a sort of way to make sure laptops meet a certain benchmark when it comes to processor, all-day battery life, as well as connectivity. If you want to learn more about the Evo program, you can check out this URL right here. But what's interesting about the program is that Intel seems to be marketing towards a mix of business users as well as creators. And we're going to use that metric as a means of evaluating where this laptop sits best. So, starting with design, and well, you may wonder, does design matter when it comes to this sort of evaluation? But I'd argue that if you're buying this to use every single day, well, you're going to be looking at it every single day. So, in my head, yeah, design does matter. And you can tell just by looking at this thing, it knocks design out of the park. It's got this full aluminium construction with these beautiful chamfered edges that I just haven't seen on a laptop like this before. So when it comes to design, I think the creator and the business person can appreciate it both the same. So I'm going to give a point to both. So moving on to the screen, this is a 13 inch OLED panel. And what that means is that text is going to look sharp, colors are going to look punchy, and those blacks are going to look creamy and crunchy. So when it comes to watching anything like Netflix or YouTube, this screen is going to do a stellar job. So while business users and creatives can appreciate that both the same, where this leans more towards the creatives is in its color accuracy. This screen boasts at least 100% of the Adobe sRGB color gamut. So when it comes to any sort of mission critical work such as color grading your videos or any sort of graphics work, this screen won't let you down and it's going to be accurate from start to finish. That's extremely important to a creator because when it comes to sharing your work with any sort of clients or posting online, you really want to make sure that it looks the exact same on their screens as it does on yours. So for that reason alone, I've got to give this one to the creator. So let's move on to the general specs. But before that, if this is your first time coming to the channel, my name's Robin. And if you've been enjoying the content you've been seeing as up to now, why don't you hit that subscribe button and uh, well, you know what that means. <laughs> so this has an 11th gen Intel i7 quad core processor as well as 16 gigabytes of solder on RAM. And that's the highest configuration that this laptop comes in. Now that might sound like just a load of numbers and letters, but what it really means is for the business user, they can open as many Chrome tabs as they want. They can have the entire Microsoft Office suite open as well as Slack running in the background. So while the creative user might also benefit from that, they have additional needs that need to be met. And I'm not sure the specs in this will meet all those needs. They need an extra headroom when it comes to photo processing in Adobe Photoshop or video rendering in Premiere. And when it comes to After Effects, I'd say don't even bother. So while this is a hugely capable machine and will get you most of the way there, I'm going to have to give the benefit to the business user. This configuration has a 512 gigabyte SSD. So what that means is that this can wake up in less than a second, similar to how a tablet would be. Plus the inclusion of Windows Hello with their fingerprint sensor as well as facial recognition means that not only are you going to get in quickly, but your contents are going to be safe and secured. So who benefits from that more? I'd say it's a draw. Point to each. Well, how about graphics? Well, you know, graphics aren't used just for gaming. In fact, they assist overall with a more fluid experience when it comes to using the operating system. Everything from animations, video playback, and they even assist towards some productivity packages. So with an integrated graphics like the one in this machine, the Iris Xe from Intel, you'll find that any sort of productivity work you do will be accelerated. And it's especially useful if you want to plug in an extra monitor 
and get that additional real estate. However, when it comes to some of the programs that creators might find themselves using on a day-to-day -day basis, such as graphics intensive programs like DaVinci Resolve, Adobe InDesign, you'll notice that an integrated graphics isn't quite enough to get you there. You'll be far better off looking for something with a discrete graphics from popular brands such as Nvidia or AMD. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to give the point to business. Let's talk about build quality. And as I mentioned earlier, this has a full aluminum chassis. So this thing is seriously just solid as a rock. Now, I had a great experience using the keyboard as well. I found the keys not to be too mushy or sticky at all, but in fact, they actually had quite a comfortable and satisfying click to them. I use this as my daily driver over the course of a week, and I can confirm that this is one of my favorite keyboards when it comes to a laptop of this size. When it comes to the trackpad, I did have a comfortable time using it. However, I wish it was just that little bit bigger, but understandably, I'd realized that would compromise the size of either the laptop or the keyboard itself. So if I had a problem using it, I'd probably just use a mouse instead. So to me, I feel like either side could benefit from this. So I'm gonna give a point to both. When it comes to connectivity in an I.O., the Spectre is rocking Bluetooth 5, which means I could connect my Huawei FreeBuds 4i, video scene right here, for our daily Zoom calls and had no issues whatsoever. It's also got Wi-Fi 6 on board, so it works with all the latest routers that come out. And we tested around the office and my experience was overall pretty secure and consistent. So moving on to physical ports, and you'll be happy to know, yes, it has a headphone jack, thankfully. It's also got a USB-A 3.1, a micro SD card slot, and two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. And that's where things get a little bit interesting. These Thunderbolt 4 ports allow you to expand the ability of this laptop quite substantially. If you have a docking station at home with multiple monitors set up, printers, hard drives, everything you need, you can plug this straight in and instantly have a wide array of accessories ready to go then take it away and you have your mobile workstation on the train. Similarly, if you're a creator, you can get an external GPU that will plug straight into this and give you those abilities that are missing with that integrated GPU. That being said, those external graphics cost almost as much as this laptop. So while it's amazing that this can give you that expandability, I'm afraid it doesn't come as standard and I'm gonna have to give the point to business. So I'm gonna talk about my experience now using different sort of aspects of this laptop, starting with the audio visual side of things. So the speakers are made by Bang & Olufsen, so you'd expect a sort of a premium quality, and they're pretty decent, especially for a laptop of this size. How to migrate from Android to Apple. And we take a look at the Airbnb app in our accessibility spotlight, Plus, what's all the hype about the Clubhouse app? We're gonna show you how to use it. They didn't wow me or anything. They are kind of lacking in bass, but when it comes to the actual sound quality, there wasn't any distortion at the higher volume levels. And they even have this neat little spatial sort of stereo trick when I was listening to music. So anything when it comes to watching YouTube, Netflix, or even Zoom calls, these speakers will do. And speaking of Zoom calls, let's talk about the webcam. Now, webcam as well, it's not gonna blow you away. It's 720p and it looks fine, it looks good, but what I really like is that it's in the right place. Right there at the top where webcams should be, not down at the bottom where it's looking up your nose. And if you don't like webcams looking at you, there's a little kill switch on the side and also a bonus for those Zoom call users, there is a little mic mute button right on the keyboard. So no more fiddling around with awkward key combinations trying to figure out how to unmute yourself when you're called upon. There's just a button right there for you. So in all, uh, creators would definitely benefit from all of these features. Like there's no denying that, but everything here is predominantly for the business user. So because of that, I'm gonna give it to business. So onto tablet mode. And this was something I wasn't really sure how I'd get on with, but surprisingly, I actually really enjoyed it. 
especially when it came to things like media consumption. Reading articles on this thing is just a blast. It's got, got this big 16 by 9 display that it makes you feel like you're reading a newspaper again. The words are just big and clear and it really beats any article I've ever read on just my smartphone or even a smaller tablet. Where I didn't have a great experience though was actually doing more productivity-based tasks. Things like spreadsheets, for example. Now, even though you go into tablet mode per se, it's still just Windows and it still operates as such. So you're not gonna find any tablet specific features like you might expect. Things like pinch to zoom. On Google Docs, if you wanna zoom in on a cell in, X, in uh, Google Sheets, you still have to go and hit that percentage and change it from 50 to 100 or down or whatever. It's just, it's not as simple to use as you might think. So, all in all, everything considered, I'm gonna have to give the point to Creator. So, moving on to battery life, HP claims that you can get 22 hours off a single charge, which is fantastic, and if I had even gotten half of that, I'd be very, very pleased. Now, doing solely productivity-based tasks, I could get roughly about two days off a single charge on this, even with about 20% left towards the end. But as soon as I switched over to doing more intensive tasks, such as Resolve and Photoshop, I noticed the battery life take a significant hit. So I wouldn't expect to get a full day's charge out of this if you're solely doing those kind of tasks. And not only do you take a dip to battery life, but also I noticed the laptop did start to heat up a bit and that fan did kick in. Now the fan wasn't overly loud or worrisome, but if you're in a quiet environment or recording audio, that is certainly something to take into consideration. So for that and those factors alone, I'm gonna have to give it to business. So let's wrap things up and take a look at the scoreboards, starting with the creator side of things. Well, you can see it did pretty well and it stood out specifically in the tablet mode and on screen. And you know, that makes sense. With the tablet mode, I really enjoy the kind of aspects that it added to my creative experience. Things like the sketching, planning, and using the stylus, all sorts. And with the screen, it makes total sense as well because I, could, I had the certain confidence that my colors were accurate and if I was sending something to a client or sending something off to be printed, I'd know that those colors will look correct. Now, let's take a look over on the business section and, well, you can see we have a winner. But it's important to remember that there were a lot of draws on either side here. Yes, overall the business side has the bigger number, but I think all in all, this is a very capable laptop when it comes to creators. And coming in at under $2,000, it's a premium one at that too. But do you think we got this right? Do you think it should have won where it lost somewhere else? Or do you think it should have lost where it won in somewhere else? If you have anything to say, let us know in the comment section below. And please subscribe if you like this content. And if you want to know more about the Intel Evo series, check out this review we did right here.